The Cleveland Cavaliers are achieving the impossible and it's not a fluke. Without their best player on paper from previous years in Colin Sexton, Cleveland's been led by a combination of a breakout campaign from Darius Garland and a tall ball playing style which sees three big men at least 6 foot 11 inches tall grace their starting five. Let's delve into how the NBA's biggest feel-good story are doing it their own way in a modern game that sees 90% of teams play the exact same way. Quickly, only 12.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Cleveland's well-designed project this past offseason, crafted by the team's front office, called for some development this season, but not this much growth, and we certainly didn't think the Cavs would be finding this lethal of a flow so early in the year. It was presumed that 21-22 would be another year of rebuilding for the squad's young and inexperienced core of players. If things bounce their way, maybe they could earn a spot in the NBA's play-in tournament, but the state of affairs for Cavs Nation has altered big time. Following a brutally tough to watch 22 win campaign in 2021, this season's team was forecasted by the quote unquote experts and Las Vegas odds makers to tally up only a few more W's than that. Conversely, Cleveland's off to a totally unexpected and feel good 18 and 12 start and are currently only a half a game back of the Chicago Bulls for the number three seed in the Eastern Conference. In this shocking start over their first 30 outings, the Cavs have ran it up on teams with a defensive charge led by 20-year-old rookie forward Evan Mobley, who's altering both shots as well as the trajectory of a franchise that's long to break free from the grip of LeBron James. Cavs center Jarrett Allen said with just a little bit of hesitation following Monday's 105-94 win over the Miami Heat, Cleveland's fourth straight W and eighth in 10 games. I don't think people are going to say this, but I think everybody is a little surprised. It's just the nature of what we're doing. We're playing excellent basketball. We're playing above everybody's standards, playing together as a team. We're doing everything we need to do to win, and it's working. I think we're surprising a lot of people, end quote. However, sneaking up on teams because they assume they're facing the old Cavs, that element of surprise is fading. With an insane 14 of their wins coming by double digits, Cleveland's last eight Ws have been at least by 12 points. Regardless of whether or not they're in front of their home fans at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse or in a hostile environment on the road, this group of feisty, multi-talented Cavs are building up self-assurance along with some well-deserved respect across the league. Heat coach Eric Spolstra said before the Cavs beat his team for the second time in 11 days, this is not a flash in the pan what they're doing. They're committed to an identity and JB has done a great job building that defensively. That's key because when you're having an off night shooting, you always have something you can bank on defensively. And like a team ripped out of a magazine covering the NBA's past, the Cavs are relying on their defense to win. I'm not saying they don't value offense or lack scores, as eight players in their depth chart, minus the injured Colin Sexton, are posting at least 9.3 points per game. Having said that, the Forest City's early success all comes back to their effort defensively. The Cavs are currently allowing 101.5 points per game, second in the association, only behind the powerhouse Golden State Warriors. But in the previous four seasons, the Cavs finished 25th, 30th, 30th, and 29th in defensive rating. Coach Bickerstaff has really stumbled upon something with a starting lineup featuring the 7-foot Evan Mobley, 6-foot 11 Jarrett Allen, and 7-foot Laurie Markkinen, a group of tall ballers some Cavs fans have started to call Tower City, which is named after one of Cleveland's downtown areas. Former NBA champion Kevin Love said, that size is causing trouble for teams in the way that we can defend and how hard we play as well. That's definitely gaining us some respect around the league. Love's been starting to play a lot better recently, which is a great sign for Cleveland, but moving on from K-Love to the impact of Cleveland's number three overall pick from this summer's NBA draft, Evan Mobley, whose value can't be overstated in fueling the Cavs' turnaround to legitimacy. Mobley's combination of IQ, instincts, and length make him resemble a 10-year veteran and the scary part is, the man's improving on a game-to-game -game basis. It's no coincidence that while he was injured with an elbow sprain, Cleveland went 0-4. He's averaging 13.8 points, 8.3 rebounds, 2.5 assists, and 1.8 blocks, was named the league's top rookie for October and November, 
and is battling out Toronto's Scotty Barnes for the front runner in the Rookie of the Year race. Mobley's came into the Cavs organization and changed its identity. 31-year-old guard Ricky Rubio, whose steadiness, leadership, and mentoring of Darius Garland since his arrival in a trade this summer has also led to Cleveland's stunning reversal. Speaking on Darius Garland, Rubio said, quote, he's special, really mature for his age. He knows how to play the game the right way. There's just simply something else about this Cavs team who lost their leading scorer Colin Sexton to a season-ending knee injury last month. They're sharing both the rock and the attention. On any given night, there's a different scoring leader. Cleveland has seven players averaging in double figures, and on Monday night, it was Love's turn to shine as he poured in 23 points all in the second half. The 33-year-old is playing with renewed joy after being slowed by injuries the past two years. Love has embraced his role coming off the bench, yet another sign of this team's willingness to sacrifice. Love said, We really celebrate each other. You don't get this often. We have something that is bigger than ourselves, and that has given us all hope that we can make something special here happen. We feel it. What started off as just a feel-good, shocking story in the early season has turned into the real deal, as the Cleveland Cavaliers have become one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference after finishing with the fifth-worst record in the NBA last season. The Cavs won their fifth straight game to improve to 18-12 with a 124-89 blowout win over the shorthanded Houston Rockets on Wednesday, achieving a significant milestone in the process. The Rockets were never close after the opening minutes of the game, with Darius Garland leading the way for the Cavs with 21 on 3 for 6 threes. Isaac Okoro added 20 points, including one of the most disrespectful dunks anyone's seen all season over three Houston Rocket defenders. The Cavaliers are off to their best 30-game start since 1997-98, excluding teams with LeBron James on the roster. In the seven seasons that the Cavs have played without LeBron since he entered the league, four seasons in Miami and the last three in Los Angeles, Cleveland's gone 157 and 374, a measly 29.6 winning percentage. So for the Cavs to look like a legitimate playoff team this far into a season without LeBron is a really big deal for the franchise and the city. And it'd be very challenging to find a single analyst who predicted the Cavs would have the fourth best record in the Eastern Conference through 30 games. And they've done it in a fashion that's even more surprising than their record so far. Much of the credit deservedly goes to head coach J.B. Bickerstaff and his assistants, but shoring up the middle with Jared Allen, who came over in the James Harden trade early last season, and impressive rookie Evan Mobley were key factors that have led to Cleveland's excellent interior defense. They're eighth in the NBA, allowing 1.13 points per possession around the rim, according to Synergy Sports. The addition of veteran guard Ricky Rubio, who's gotten more playing time following the season-ending injury to Colin Sexton, has also bolstered the defensive attack. Many of the numbers suggest that the Cavs will be able to continue their success. Their 3.1 net rating entering Wednesday was good for seventh in the NBA, and they have the league's most favorable remaining schedule, according to Tankathon. Whether they end up in the postseason or not, it's nice to see the Cavs taking significant steps in the post-LeBron world. What's the most special part about the 2021-22 Cleveland Cavaliers? Best answer in the comments section gets next video shoutout. The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Boston Holtain, who says picking up IT was a good call for the Lakers, even though there's a beef history with Braun and Thomas. The Lakers management needed to jump on the opportunity. Pause to read the rest of that great take from Boston. You guys are amazing for every answer. Hope you all have a great day. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.